Professor Angela Webster, thank you for your time. What is known about this new subvariant? Well, the BA.2, which we're hearing a lot about in the news this week, is actually a sublineage of the Omicron variant. It hasn't got its own letter yet. It may or may not do in, in, um, as we come. It's actually one of the sublineages of the original Omicron. We have BA.1 and there's actually uh, BA.3 as well, but we don't know so much about that yet. Uh, we do know that the BA.2 has been around around the world since early January, and in fact, it was in Australia in early January. But because of the way we um, moved to testing, particularly in Victoria and, and New South Wales, where we're relying much more on rat testing and notifying of cases, that's meant that we don't have the, the PCR tests uh, in the same numbers at, at population level to be able to test and work out what lineages are circulating around. So at the moment, we don't know quite uh, whether it's the dominant one, we suspect it may be, but certainly in other countries around the world, we've seen in the US and in Denmark, where that it's uh, quite rapidly become uh, the more um, the, vet, the sublineage that's uh, more spread in the population compared with the original Omicron, the BA.1. What else do we know about how it differs from the Omicron variant we were talking about at the end of last year? It does have quite a lot of differences and mutations, um, uh, some in common with the original sublineage and some, uh, some new ones. Uh, there has been a lot of talk in the media about it being a stealth variant. It doesn't, it's not stealthy in the way it, it spreads around the place or the way it creeps up on people, nothing like that. <laughs> but it is stealthy in the way that the, the simple tests we used early on to distinguish Delta, the previous variant of concern from, from Omicron, was uh, to do a simple test with the PCR. Now that doesn't work with the with the BA two point zero. It looks very much like Delta when you do that test, but it's not. It's just that that way of distinguishing the, the sublineages won't work. So that's why it, it attracted the name Stealth. It's not that it's any more stealthy. It may be slightly more transmissible, but the news from looking around the world, which we often do to try and understand what might happen in Australia, seems to show, for instance, in Denmark, that there's no change in the rate of hospitalisation. So it just it's not causing any more serious illness than the original Omicron strain. Do we know if it's being picked up on rat tests and whether it is being counted by vaccination? Uh, uh, it, it, uh, there's, uh, all evidence shows that you can pick it up on rat tests in the same way that you can pick up the other uh, Omicron sub sublineages and the other variants, in fact, um, Delta and before. Um, so it will show up on the tests at the same kind of um, sensitivity, so the same amount of false positives, false negatives as other, other variants. Um, what we do, sorry, I've forgotten what the other part of the question is. Oh no, is. that's okay. Um, it, it was, do we know if it's been counted by vaccination? All right, okay, so we do know that with the earlier uh, lineage of, of Omicron that vaccination wasn't necessarily uh, preventing symptomatic infection as well as it was against earlier variants, but it was still stopping serious illness. And there were some signs that it was um, less serious in terms of the, the effects than, than earlier variants. That seems to hold true for BA2, BA.2. So it's no more serious. It may be more transmissible. And we should we can't expect that, we shouldn't expect that there'd be any uptick in um, the proportion of people being hospitalised course when there's more people infected there'll be more people in hospital but it doesn't mean that the, there's a change in the, in the way that the infection is behaving. And speaking about the numbers of people infected the New South Wales Health Minister today warned that cases could more than double within six weeks uh, so I suppose we're back to that point where people really should be thinking about minimising their risk and exposure once again. Sure. Well, it's of course, it's very important to point out that uh, the uptick in infections that we've seen in New South Wales in the last week or so may be nothing to do with what sublineage of Omicron variant is circulating. It's much more likely to be contributed to by the fact that we've uh, got rid of density limits and the mask mandates. And so people are coming together a lot more than they were. They're together. The rain has been terrible here. So people have been inside and in less well ventilated spaces when they have been together. And all of that we know, social distancing, reversing that and not wearing masks is what we know contributes to spread. And so we should expect an uptick anyway. Um, and, and that's what we've seen. And I think for anybody who, who wants to avoid um, as much as possible personally protect themselves and their family, 
you can still wear your mask. You can still avoid dense, uh, densely unventilated places. Um, and that's certainly what we're still doing in hospitals. We're still wearing our uh, P95 masks and walking around with goggles when we're in the, in the room with other people. Do you expect that the New South Wales government is considering right now whether it will need to reintroduce uh, tougher restrictions? What the politicians do <laughs> is difficult to predict, always. And certainly the advice from health in New South Wales has remained steady. And it has been that if, you're in, uh, if you want to avoid infection, you wear a mask and you, you uh, meet other people in well-ventilated spaces and you, uh, you observe social distancing or you keep your distance from people. And that advice has never changed throughout the, the recent pandemic. It's only been the mandates on, on how we need to behave that, um, uh, uh, that have changed. So I think that um, what we what people can do is 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 to take up vaccination, uh, booster vaccination. We know that boosters have been slower to be um, taken up uh, around the place, and certainly going and getting your booster is is very important now. I think if we want to limit this this big uptake and avoid some of those hospitalisations that we could we could spread out. Professor Angela Webster, good to speak to you. Thank you. Thanks very much.